Alrighty. Okay, guys. Um, as far as uh, injuries, Charles Woods did not participate. Rob Havenstein did not participate. Um, and then, um, you know, I had a couple guys that were limited. But, um, you know, as far as Rob's concerned, you know, he's making good progress. We'll see how the week kind of continues to progress. And Charles Woods, same thing with his ankle. How did uh, KT Leviston look first action in a while? You know, today was, you know, it, so I would say this. He's looked good. You know, we just decided to be able to start his clock. Um, obviously, with Jaron getting an opportunity to, to go back to Cleveland. And so um, he's been a guy that we were excited about. Ended up getting injured, and um, you know, and now we'll uh, we'll get a chance to see him on the practice field, so that'll be good. Where do you want me to start? You know, I, I think the the biggest thing is is just the momentum, um, the techniques, the fundamentals. I mean, you know, everybody tries to run it, but they do it at a little bit different clip. And you know, you hear people talk about Jeff Stoutlin, um, You know, is a guy that you know one of the great coaches in this league. Um, there's an understanding of leverage angles, get off, um, a rapport that's been established, and um, they've been doing it for a long time. And then obviously Jalen has a great feel for being able to kind of ride that wave, if you will. So there's a lot of challenges. Nick, Angio's talked a little bit, um, not a lot, but a little bit, about how he took the year at some time and studied and tried to implement maybe some new things into what he's doing now. You are very familiar with this defense at this point in your career. so. Is there anything when you watch the Eagles that looks different to you, how he's deploying certain personnel, or um, does it look like sort of the vintage that you've seen from him? You know, I think it's it's situationally dependent. I, I think the biggest thing that I would say that makes Vic a great coach is he's going to adjust and adapt and, and figure out what is going to be best given the circumstances. There's still a foundational philosophy. There's a way of making people play and, a, and an understanding of how to try to limit what people are trying to get done and you know the illusion of what it really looks like, and that is on display. I think they've really done an excellent job. They've obviously played great football as a team the last six weeks, but um, you can see guys are comfortable. Um, he's working with a lot of you know some rookies that are playing really well, um, some younger players, and, and they're one of the best defenses in the league, and, and by a lot of metrics, they're arguably the best. And so, I think the thing that you know you appreciate is just the evolution and the adaptability. And so. The answer is yes, there's some different stuff, but also you see a willingness to adjust to what fits for that team. And you can see, I mean, he's got a big picture head coaching perspective from it, not exclusively just through a defensive lens. And I think that's one, one of the things that I admire and respect the most about this team is they play as a team instead of separate entities, offense, defense, and teams. Yeah, he's, he's been outstanding, you know, and, and I think they've embraced him. I mean, he's a huge energy spark plug for them. He's explosive. Um, he's getting tough, harder in yards. He, if you give him a vertical seam, I mean, he's so explosive that before you know it, it's a downhill inside zone run, and he's 60 yards out the gate. And so um, he's been really productive in the pass game, and, and I think that he fits really well with what they're trying to do. And, and he, he fits in any scheme. So let's, But he's playing great, looks great. Um, they're doing a great job of giving him a variety of opportunities, and he's surrounded by a bunch of really good players. And, and I think, you know, similar to what Jordan was asking about, you know, their defense, They've hit their stride, and it's um, you know it's no mistake why they've won you know six games in a row, and um, they're finding their identity, and, and certainly Saquon is in the middle of a, a lot of really good stuff that they're doing. And if preparing for that push push play, is there anything you guys can do other than your regular goal line? type defense or is there a different kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, you need to be able to cover those gaps and in that situation arises in short yardage and in the tight red area, you know, so hopefully you're efficient enough that you don't get to too many of those situations um, where it's a, a big advantage for them and they've created that advantage and so um, there's a lot of different things. I don't want to get too far into it and the hard thing too is, is once you get to this point in the year to simulate what that would actually be like um, in some of those, you know, rugby scrum type of settings, that that's difficult, and it's why uh, it's why they are one of one. You know, a lot of people try to emulate that, but um, they are the ones that have done it at such a high level, and um, it's been really difficult for people to stop. You saw them last year. I mean, you have experience pretty close uh, with, with everything they've got. A lot of the players have been taking. Work. What are your memories of that game? What, what you? I mean, you have some success in the second half. You have some out of the end zone, but in general. What I just remember that they do a great job of controlling the game. You know, before you know it, you know, you're up 14-10, and then the next thing you know, they take a two-minute drive right down the field. They score right before the end of the half. Um, and even though, you know, it was a great job by Akello getting the turnover, but it felt like they never really relinquished control of the game. Um, Jalen made some unbelievable plays, um, you know, off schedule, being able to create with his legs. And, um, 
you know, and then they've got great skill players. You know, they, they, they were able to make us pay in some different coverage contours and some different matchups. And then offensively, we weren't able to capitalize on some opportunities and the possessions were limited. I mean, they shortened the game um, and that's been a consistent theme that they do an excellent job of. And so, um, you know, I, I remember feeling like that's a damn good team. And, um, you know, we had our chances, but they certainly, you know, made it difficult for us and they, they earned that win. They, they invested a lot in their secondary, not just from um, a personnel standpoint in the draft, but also coaching and all of that. Yep. Um, just from your perspective, you guys have really developed a couple of exciting young players in the defensive backfield as well. So what maybe don't we know on the outside about what a task that is getting young, really young players like that up to speed in what kind of complex System. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a good question. You know, I think it takes, you know, first of all, obviously it's about the player first and foremost. Do they have the capacity, the understanding, the abilities to then be able to translate it into um, all the different things that they're seeing and the adjustments that need to be made within the different coverages that you're asking guys to play. And so I think that's a tremendous reflection on the players, number one, but then the ability to teach it. You know, you look at Christian Parker, you look at Vic Fangio, um, you know, those guys have, have been doing it for a really long time in terms of uh, helping players reach and realize their highest potential especially as it relates to the back end. No different than us with guys like Aubrey and, and Chris Beak and Mike Harris um, being able to help you know some of our players get up to speed or get reacclimated or watch them continue to grow. And that's been you know illustrated from the corner and the safety position for us. Um, and the same thing for them. Uh, but but it's um, you know it's a really it's a really sound defense that takes smart players and then obviously they've got some guys that have great concept trigger great you know natural abilities as is but there's an understanding i think you really see them play seven as one um, they understand you know what are the different things that teams are trying to do to attack different coverages and then a lot of times they're playing a certain coverage and you don't know what coverage it is unless certain routes distribute accordingly and they have tools that they can activate and it's um it's why they're really good and it's why you know the the system that you know really foundationally was started with Coach Fangio has has been um, you know tried to be emulated and replicated for a handful of years. See one more guy. All right. You scared him off, Artis. All right. <laughs> Thanks, guys. You had an opening act today, with Sean. I don't know if you knew. He was I, like the opening band. For yeah, you. I didn't know that. Yeah, appreciate him <laughs> coming out. Um, Matthew, what? Uh, you've seen iterations or like uh, different uh, versions of people who have come out of this defensive system. Um, you've practiced against it, but what stands out to you about specifically what, what Vic Fangio does and what his players do? No, I mean, I, I think it starts obviously with their personnel. Their personnel is, uh, you know, as good as it gets uh, as far as what we've seen. Obviously, their front is, um, you know, really disruptive. They play physical, fast, aggressive, um, you know, and I think they play that way from, you know, from the front line to the to the back seven, so um, you know I think uh, it starts with those guys. They bring it to life. Obviously, I'm familiar with the scheme, and, and a lot of the players, um, you know, have just played against them um, uh, or watched them from afar. But uh, it's uh, it's impressive what you see on tape. Um, they do a really nice job of you know disguising their looks and giving you a bunch of things to look at, and they're not wasting players in any kind of coverage or anything like that, right? They don't they don't have somebody go carry cover an area of grass just to cover an area of grass if nobody's over there. So they're always trying to buy back defenders and do a great job of using the guys that they have on the field. And, and that's what makes this defense, uh, you know, a challenging one. It's like after every game, we're asking about the next play on the list, the passing yards, touchdowns, whatever it is. At what point in your career do you realize, like, I'm, been, I'm making it up that list pretty quick and I have a chance to be among the top? Uh, I don't really ever think about it, to be honest with you. Um, uh, you know, didn't before this year, didn't really know that um, before I feel like I got asked about it from you guys or talked about it with, um, you know, from you guys. Um, it's, again, humbling. Uh, you know, I do uh, I do love playing this game. I love competing. I, I love the history of it. I love, uh, you know, um, being a part of it. And um, it's cool to be, you know, a part of it in that regard. In the division, everyone's within a game of each other. I'm not sure you keep your eye on those teams at this point. I'm not. I'm, you know, solely focused on what we got to do this week. Um, none of that stuff matters if we don't take care of our own business. So um, I know that's our mindset here. Just uh, do everything that we can to give ourselves the best chance to win week in and week out and, and figure it out from there. Are you 
you guys have deployed the tight ends in different ways from a package of personnel standpoint, but for Colby to show up and get that touchdown catch, what was it like seeing him? That was great. Um, had a little bit of a feeling pre-snap that they might try to play a little bit of an aggressive front. We'd run the ball really well, you know, recently in that drive and the drive before. So figured they might be playing us, uh, you know, a little bit tighter. And, and it was a great call by Sean and got in the huddle, told everybody I'd be alive here. You know, got a chance and, and uh, he did a great job sneaking through and, and making a great catch, obviously. I mean, that was, um, you know, if I had to do over again, maybe maybe a, a foot shorter so he's not <laughs> reaching. But uh, it, was a, it was a hell of a catch to hold on to it and, and get both feet down. What's it? Um me You're fine. Minutes, but um, what's it like for you having played so long, but playing in a, a Sunday night game against a team, you know, maybe arguably the hottest, one yeah. of the hottest teams in the league for you personally? I know you take every game one at a time, mm -hmm. but do you get a little bit more amped up in terms of that kind of stage? You know, I think the biggest thing is uh, you, you work all off season, you work all training camp and, and all, all, you know, the beginning of the season to get the points like this, right? Where you're still in your, your divisional race. You're playing a, a primetime opponent on a big stage. Yeah, absolutely. It's an exciting game. There's going to be a lot of buzz um, around this one. They're a, a, a hell of a football team. Their roster, top to bottom, is as good as it gets in this league, if not the best. And um, it's, uh, it's really impressive uh, what they do and, and when you look at them on tape. So um, it'll be a big challenge for us at home. Um, you know, we'll see if we can go out there and, and uh, give them a good shot. Margin, did you? We saw, you know, your clutch moments in Detroit and all of those things. But in LA, in the world, watching in those island games, did you um, find like a different part of your personality through that? We see it kind of in the, you know, the finger pistols and the the facial express, those types of things. I don't know, man. That's kind of always been there. <laughs> I just, uh, I feel like the game, the coverage, they got more camera angles now than they used to. <laughs> um, no, but I've always enjoyed playing. I've always been, uh, you know, excited for guys on our team when we do well and score points or get plays on defense, whatever it is. Um, you know, it's, this is meant to be fun. When you go out there and you execute like you're supposed to and you make a play uh, and, you know, you help your team do something successful, man, you should be excited about it. And uh, I definitely love that. Um, I love being in those those crunch time, crunch time moments. Um, sometimes it works out for us, sometimes it doesn't. But uh, definitely, uh, you know, love putting, putting myself out there and, and, and going for it. Like some version of this every few weeks as you guys have gone back and forth with the centers and, and mm -hmm. all of that and injuries and all that but how does your responsibility change when it's um, maybe a less experienced guy up front in Bo who I know you've, you've lauded for, for handling the job and yeah. there's just th things he hasn't seen yet. Yeah and I think that's what you know as a coaching staff they do a great job of trying to expose them as much as they possibly can during the week. I help them talk through all that kind of stuff during the week. I think Wendy does a hell of a job getting all those guys ready to play and, and obviously being a center himself um, has that ex experience in, in what uh, you know Bo's having to deal with in all of our centers so um, I think Wendy does a hell of a job getting them ready and then on game day you can't be out there thinking you got to go out there and cut it loose trust yourself trust uh, you know the guys around you and, and I think all our guys did a really nice job of that last week we'll look to carry that over into this week I guess does that mean though that you do maybe a little bit more on that particular part of it or? you know sometimes yes and sometimes no um, you know there's a lot of the stuff that uh, he's you know really well equipped to uh, to go out there and handle and then there's certain times where um, I'll step in and, and make sure that uh, we're doing something that uh, I think we need to be doing. Or none. Love it. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. I know you said post game that Kobe Grant predicted the, uh, <laughs> the sack and the interception. Did he yeah. make a call for the uh, NFC Defensive Player of the Week as well? Nah, we didn't we see that one coming. But, you know, it's always good. Yeah. How, how do you? Does like the team tell you? Like, I mean, what, what what's the process? <laughs> you tell me that you tell me the night before and say, don't say nothing to nobody. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like, what's your reaction and when do you start telling people and what kind of response have, have you been getting? I mean, this, you made history uh, this week. I don't think I did it too hard. It's it's a week, you know. You just want to win the games. So once I start getting like defense player of the year, then it you know it it start moving the needle. But for right now, it's just it's on to the next week. So. How have you felt yourself take steps forward when you got here to now where you are? Just being com comfortable in the defense. It ain't like nothing about my ability has changed. You know, that's always been there. It's just about understanding where I'm needed in the defense. Yeah. Where was your biggest challenge there? Time. 
yeah, it was one of those things I was kind of trying to force my way into making plays. Like thinking, oh yeah, it's just, it's not going to be nothing different. It's, it's a lot of difference between college and NFL. So it just going through the, the growing pains about it and just not getting discouraged when something not going my way. Do you feel like the game has slowed down for you a little bit? Or? A little bit. I don't think it's, you know, I still got ways to go. So, yeah. What uh, what do you think that Eagles offense, and what, what do you think you guys are going to have to do to kind of slow them down? Great. They got a bunch of weapons, you know, great running back, receivers, you know, O-line, quarterback. Um, I think with us, just doing our job. You know, they, they get paid like we get paid. So it's going out there and doing our job and minimizing mistakes. Earlier in the season, you, know, you had a few weeks where your role had gone down a little bit. During that time, you were Wait, can you repeat the question? Earlier in the season, you had a few weeks where your role had been reduced just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Did the coaches have any areas of emphasis for you during that time? And how did you approach that? Being intentional. You know, uh, with everything, because first it was my technique. My technique was kind of going away because my mind was kind of going on what I'm doing in the play because I wasn't comfortable in the playbook yet. It was just more of kind of trying to juggle everything at once instead of, you know, honing in on, on each thing and letting it just build upon itself. So, yeah. You got, you know, another opportunity after a couple of guys got hurt. Did you know that you were ready to have that more intentionality or was that just kind of like finding it out in the game? Now, it had to go with the week of preparation, yeah. you know, with me getting more reps in practice and me actually being intentional with the reps, you know, it kind of made me confident to, if I did get a chance to play in the game, I was ready. Cam, um, Kobe Turner told us earlier this week that the D linemen are all trying to steal sacks from each other in, yeah. in the best way. And uh, that whoever loses has to shave their beard. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> I know, right? Um, but just kind of wondering, I mean, these turnovers, they can tend to come in bunches, and I know you guys are all happy for each other, but competing with each other for the for the numbers is, as well in the in the secondary. So is there anything you can tell us about the dynamic, how you guys do compete with each other um, to try to see, you know, maybe who has the most at the end of the year? It's kind of weird because me and Tank got, got three and four right now, you know, Q and Cam trying to work their way up. So it's more, <laughs> it's, it's more like trying to share a cake with everybody. You know, everybody makes some plays. So I guess when, once those guys, you know, start catching their pits because they getting sacks, we ain't getting no sacks yet. So it's kind of just building up. But I don't think it's competitive because we all want to make plays. But at the same time, it's more like we want everybody to eat. Yeah. From a camaraderie standpoint, how have you guys supported each other? And I guess in what ways has that support in turn helped you with making some of these plays that you made in the last few years? And everything, especially with, with Cam and Q, just whatever mistakes they're making, they come to the sideline and telling me, you know, how to fix it, how not to make the same mistake. So, and then even the plays when they see something that could be even a good play, you know, they tell me what I could do better. So it's always, you know, just perfecting my craft. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks. Thanks very much.